Please note that though this is a spoiler-free review of the subject, I do spoil the series and or franchise leading up to this particular entry. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam-pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. Outlast Whistleblower DLC Review. I already reviewed Outlast, so I am not going to go over anything that hasn't changed. I won't be restating anything in this video. You take on the role of Waylon Park, the software engineer working for Murkoff. Oh, Murkoff, like Murky. I just got that. When we meet, who, who ends up sending the email? When we meet Waylon, he has been working for a few weeks at the Mount Massive Asylum, and due to the strict security measures, he has not been in contact with his wife or kids since he started there. We already know that he sends this email to, you know, reporters to, yeah, blow the whistle, but before this, before playing this, you don't know what happened to him after he sent that email. This opens in the underground lab where Outlast ends. It's no longer a spoiler and it means that you don't get to see the outside world before you're in the 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 asylum. I, I I still I stand by I I like that they did that in the first one. It you know you are actively making the decision that you know you're going in there. It's still kind of dumb that immediately after you know he says okay I want to go go back out. But nevertheless, you the player actively make the choice to enter this. You know clearly. Yeah, there's clearly some some stuff that's very dangerous here, but you still make the choice. But here, since they already did that in this one, you don't get to see the outside world. Instead, you are way down in the deepest, darkest recesses of this evil place right from the start. And the you know, basically the first thing you well, the very first thing you see is you're being strapped into the morphogenic engine, or yeah, you're you're being you're you're being you're seeing the the images from, but but you know moments after that, it you know jumps back in time, and you see that you you know you are sending this email, so there is this slight glimmer of of hope of ending this nightmare and then immediately you know you have to walk through some of this underground lab and yeah you are very deep inside this is you you understand why Waylon ended up blowing the whistle it's really you know it's 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 a toxic environment it's it's choking you're you're you 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 can't breathe for all this awfulness that is right around you and keep in mind this is before any blood is spilled this is you're you're walking you know into this lab you're you're surrounded by you know doctors and there's some security guards and such so yeah it's and and I really like that they show us that that we get to see what it looked like before and the but but yeah you know the lab it's one of your work areas you're literally and and you 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 know one of one of the prisoners even you know one of the patients who's about to be 
subjected to the the morphogenic engine, which we know is pretty gruesome. It's it's a really ugly. You know, you 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 spend the closing minutes of Outlast turning this thing off. So now you're seeing it fully active and someone being forced into it and the the guy basically you know jumps up and and you know there's there's like there's there's glass but yeah you know you when you when you in outlast go you know go to reach the morphogenic engine you go through this this one like computer area that's where Whalen is and so yeah, one of these guys jumps up and says, "Please save me. You can do, it, you know." And it's yeah, it's it's really gripping and it's also such you know, you you it's it's maybe the the most impactful time you see one of the patients and they aren't trying to hurt you, you know. So some of them do are like saying I, I need, you know, some of them are very, you know, kind of helpless or they, they clearly shouldn't be there and such, but none of them quite did did this. And, yeah, and of course you, you aren't able to save him. And moments later you see him with, like, tubes down his mouth and up his nose and just, yeah. You know, they they basically they they put him into the, the Matrix for the first time, or another time rather. And the, you know, you 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 fix the the, you know, you you do the thing that they needed you to do there, and then you walk back to retrieve your your laptop that you used to blow the whistle and. Turns out they found it, and you are put into the machine. Then you know. Then that's when it catches back up to the the opening, and you do see some of the effects of the machine over the course of the game. But I I didn't really feel like they made a big thing out of this. It I don't know I. I feel like it really might as well have been that you got out before the machine was really turned on, before you started seeing these things, because they don't really use it for anything. And you, you know, you see the this place before it starts falling apart, and you see it as it starts to fall apart. You know, the the reason you're freed from the the machine is that one of the the, the variants, you know, breaks you free, and, yeah, which, as you might have guessed, means that they're free. And, you know, somewhat similarly to Outlast, you, you know, you, in, in, you know, you see the, the, I guess what I'm saying is it could be more different then you seeing it fall apart is not that distinctly different from Outlast, but you know it's now like staff, not necessarily just patients, not just variants that are you know seen trying to flee and you know you in Outlast you see a lot of just patients who are just you know who are just there who are not a threat to you. In this, it's more that you see these staff members trying to flee or being brutalized by the the variants and such. You know, the secu these security doctors and such. And you know, it's it's been said that this tells a more complete story. I think it does. It does do, it does add some things to the overall story, but I don't know. I I feel like that part has been blown out of proportion. I didn't see it as much like that. There's definitely in Outlast. There's definitely stuff that needed to be, you know, ex expanded upon. But I don't feel like this does that much 
to that. But it does accompany Outlast quite well, as others have noted. And this has the actual ending of the, the story where, yeah, Outlast kind of, I get why they stopped it, where and the way that they did, but it's not quite the ending and, yeah, this does actually end it. It, it shows, you know, this is largely a prequel, but it does show a little bit of what happened after the end of Outlast as well. And yeah, as such, this is where you get the full ending to Outlast, and I do think that that's... I feel like they should have included the actual ending in Outlast, because not everyone is going to play the DLC. And as others have noted, it doesn't really tie up all the loose ends. There's not that much new story-wise. There's, there's detail, but a lot of that just goes into the, the things that you only see here. You, you find out about certain patients that you then also encounter. And as others have noted, you know, this and Outlast, the, the start and the end are really great, but, you know, it gets tedious around the middle. I liked that in this, objectives, you know, in, in Outlast, several times objectives are collect X amount of Y or, you know, or go to X amount of places and activate Y. And really, you know, I, I will, you know, it, it works fine, and I don't, you know, but I do, I do like that this didn't particularly do that. In this, it tends, you know, it's still fetch quests, but it tends to be one thing at a time that you go and get, you know, so, like now, less, it'll be the key that you have to get or something. And basically, when what you what you're looking for really changes, it's because you've gone into a new area. It's not just that. Okay, well now you did this. Now you also have to do that before you can leave this area. This one, you know, kept to more of a a, a bit of a brisker pace, objective-wise, and I, I like that. You you don't spend that long in the same exact area. You know, there are, there. Are, certain sections of the asylum that are bigger than others but it's not that you're just going back and forth in the same basic hallway several times in order to get everything and some have said that it's on the level of you know blue shift half-life blue shift I wouldn't go that far and as others have noted all you know Basically, what is what is in this could have been in Outlast. It didn't need to be a DLC, really, when, you know, ideally, a DLC with, like, its own campaign is distinctly different. You know, I, I haven't played... I, I do own Bioshock Infinite, and I will get to it and review it, but... I, I haven't played it yet, but as far as I know, the DLC for that is like, I, I want to say that it's actually about the story of the first Bioshock or something. That's pretty cool, you know, so if you, it's it's not just, so yeah, it could not have been part of the the main one or, you know, it, it you you can tell whether or not you got the DLC and ideally when you play a game, you can tell whether or not you got the DLC, you know. And if if you don't really, really care about Outlast, you probably don't really want it. It's for for one thing, it's it's a lot similar, but also just 
yeah, this this isn't going to grip you if Outlast didn't. And in a lot of ways, it's it's more of the same, but not as memorable. It's it's kind of a discount Outlast, which isn't for you know a discount version of the main game is unfortunately often the case with you know DLC where it's a story mode. But I do really like we get to know Wayland much more than we get to know Miles Upshur, the protagonist of Outlast. Basically. You know, when whenever you record, you know, something that that gets the protagonist to write down notes, you know, the when when yeah, when you see something especially messed up or interesting or the like, what Waylon writes about are his you know his wife and his kids and how he worries about them. There's there's one where he's like, please don't. Don't let them show you my body, you know, and that's really gripping. That that really, yeah, that's that's great writing. That's you you really understand how much he cares. That that that's what he worries about. He's not like I'm going to die, and this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me, which it is. That's that's true, but he's like. Once I'm dead, this is going to negatively affect the people I love. And that's, yeah, that's that's really compelling. Where Miles would, you know, the, what, what he would over and over go into that was like a personal feeling or the like, was this this buzzing that he he perceived, which we never hear when we easily could have. You know, whenever you're hit by something or you get a difficult landing landing or such you can tell that you were just hurt you and you do get a you know the the kind of high pitched whine of like as as your yeah i think you know what i mean that that's in in a lot of newer first person perspective games that strive for realism you know, and you have the, the slight blur filter as your eyes readjust and, and that whole thing from the impact is basically and yeah, you, you easily could have actually perceived that in Outlast and you, you never do so that just yeah comparatively, there's there's a big difference between where the two put you in what is like going on in their mind as they're seeing these things and where Wayland just needed the money and he you know he was in this basic area and so he took a job without really knowing the the Murkoff corporation and you know because you don't expect potential employers to be monsters so whereas Miles knew about Murkoff, he read the email about really messed up stuff going on, and then he still went in alone, and then immediately wants to leave. You know, the the when when he, you know, maybe the very early on, and and something that really motivates him to try to get back out. Miles is is that Miles finds the remains of the this small military, you know that the like private military outfit that Murkoff has, and it shows you know they've the the variants are that powerful. Even the military weren't it, it, this private military force were not able to stop them. If he had known. You know the, I mean you, you see the military vehicles outside, so you do have an idea. Of, but then just that just re raises the question: Did he really think that those wouldn't be Murkoff men, and he would probably be killed by them? But it could very easily have been that he knew that there were military. You know he. He's told that really awful things go on there. He doesn't know that 
you know, the inmates are now running the asylum, but did he, you know, it's, it's clearly like there's not a lot of signs of life of it. He can't go in through the front door and such. And yeah, he doesn't see like violence before he's already entered, but it still just seems like he, at the very least, he could have like gotten one other person to go with and maybe help. And then the moment that he's somewhere that he can't get back, he yells out to the other person, call the police. He could have called, I, if he had called the police and they started to enter, then the first game would not have been, then, then Outlast would not look the way it did. That's true. But they, it didn't have to be that he didn't know about the military. They, if he had gone up and the military were, this, this military outfit were just about to, maybe, maybe like, he drove up and instead of the places being so abandoned you know the the military this military outfit asks you know what are you doing here and he like pretends to be part of Murkoff or something he's you know just or or maybe he sees them you know about to get into the, the building and he sneaks in after thinking, okay, well, if there's military here, then I'm not in danger. And then once, you know, then they shut the door behind them. Okay, I guess I'll have to find another way in. Then he finds them dead. Okay, he, he had a reasonable expectation of safety, relative safety. You know, as it is, he just comes off as kind of an idiot. And you don't sympathize with him as much as you do Wayland. And it really doesn't help that Miles is always being such a smart ass that we can't really, we don't feel like, oh man, he's really scared in this. He's just, you know, making bad jokes. I do like that, you know, I've, I've now given Miles a lot of crap. I do like that there's such different characters. I've, if, if Miles had been a lot like Waylon, then this DLC would just be much less interesting for that, you know. The the notes they take from filming things are really all that sets them apart, but that those notes do really set them apart. You know, neither speaks, you never see either of them. So that's all that the you know the developers had to show us who these people are, who these two protagonists are, and they actually did use that to really set them apart. We thankfully don't get a lot of the the really boring Chris Walker in this, which is also, you know, even if I didn't find him incredibly boring, it would still be, I mean, he's he's basically the main, like, in in the in Outlast, when you're running around, he's the one who you keep seeing. He's the main of of the yeah main variant threat, you might say. I'm not sure antagonist is entirely you know maybe more active antagonist when really Murkoff are the antagonist. But in this, you encounter I want to say Frank Manera is his name, who's this this cannibal and he's like really slim which yeah that's you know cannibals are yeah and and you know you might be thinking wait how long has he been free because you know cannibalism affecting your physiology that much but you do read a little about him apparently he didn't eat much before either he, he didn't seem to really like the taste of food or so but yeah and he's He's got a little bit of a beard, and he carries this electrical circular saw, which, when you're a bit, you know, a bit of a distance away from him, he'll start using, you know, he'll, he'll, I forget what, yeah, he'll, he'll run it slightly for, for a little bit, and you're, you're hearing it, it's, it's similar to, you know, and, and, the louder it, you hear it, the closer he is, of course, and, 
you know you can you can also use that to figure out roughly where he is so you can you know and and thus plan which direction you're going to go in based on that and it's similar to Chris Walker's chains but here it makes you think of the pain that thing is going to cost cause i I don't know if I, I can imagine that maybe they worried that if they if they gave him if if Walker had been carrying around a soul that that would have been too much. I I read somewhere that like DLC aren't rated, but I'm then more recently I couldn't find that again. But anyway, I could imagine that it's something like that. And to be fair. Jangling chains is a creepy sound. You know, it's it's not something you want to hear near you. And you know, so sound is one of the scariest, you know, senses or you know, stimuli. The the things you hear scare you especially much, especially when you can't see the thing that's making the sound. You can just hear it. And that's of course the case here. Especially when you're trying to find the best you know, escape route from him. Not necessarily running and using parkour, but just trying to you know, and, and basically, okay, so I guess he's he's a few feet to the left and a, you know, several feet away from me and yeah. And when you meet him, he actually he grabs you and he tosses you into this furnace. And you know, you, you see this in the trailers. Stay here and cook. You know, and yeah, that's that gives you an idea of that's that's one of the big, like memorable, you know, standout moments like that. And there's there, there are other things like that I'll, that I'll get into later. Yeah, I find him far scarier, scarier than Chris Walker. Some have noted that a lot has been recycled, including the protagonist voice, which is, yeah, strange. It, it doesn't seem like it would have been that difficult to just record someone because, like I said, you don't say a lot. You just, it's just little, you know, when you're you're running, he'll he'll you know sound yeah you know it it sounds like when you know he'll he'll like pant and he'll sometimes yeah you know he he doesn't say a lot of real words and he definitely don't, never outright talks but yeah like speaking entire lines and such there's one bit where the exact same lines are actually used. You you meet, yeah. I'm not, I'm not gonna give away who it is, but you meet someone that you meet in Outlast as well, and they say the exact same thing, which would bother me less if it weren't for the fact that there's no payoff in this one. When it it actually has really good payoff in Outlast, so yeah. The, the the characters in this are more memorable, especially maybe the, the last major one you encounter. And another big variant in this is Eddie Gluskin, who wants to make you his bride. And basically, you know, the 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 inmates are all male so the way that he tries to find a bride among the others is literally he will castrate them and you see this so yeah and in other ways mutilate and you know at at first when he approaches you he's he's really sweet calling you darling and you know, talking about how great you're going to be together and such. But then when, 
you keep evading him, he turns angry and starts calling you, you know, calling you a slut and saying you're, you're just like the rest of them and, and such. And because of the, 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 the morphogenic engine, his, his eyes are literally, there's more blood than, than like, you know, they're, they're more bloody than they are white, basically, and, you know, other than the pupil, of course, which isn't white, but, yeah, the whites in his eyes are almost all blood. It's really, yeah. This actually has very few idle patients the way that Outlast has a lot. It, it tends to be that, yeah, they, they, they at least try to get at you or they, they threaten you or something, but yeah. And, you know, someone said this, this could be an hour or two longer and, you know, in general that it's too short. It took me two and a half hours on this first try and for comparison Outlast itself took me four hours on the first try and three hours on the second and then I replayed it another time you know in the days leading up to this review for very close comparison where it took me three and a half hours so it's not that far off really when compared to you know the the main game so it's yeah but part of that is that the main game itself is also really short so you know if if you're buying both just keep in mind that it's not yeah it's not gonna last that long The parkour is nowhere near as good as others have pointed out. It seems like you can't mount even, you know, small desks and such. And, you know, one person joked that this is, you know, a game that really evidences that programmers need to exercise more, which apparently, yeah. And this has much less of, you know, sometimes a door either will already be blocked by, like, um, you know, a slightly turned over cabinet or the like, that you then push out of the way to open the door, or you're pushing it to block the door that you've just closed. And, yeah, they, they do that a lot less here, which they, they put it to really good use in Outlast, and I feel like if they had done it as much or as you know the, the same way in this it would kind of feel just the 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 same you know and yeah I, I that is something I really appreciate about this it really does a lot of things different from the main one and the Others have noted there's not there are not that many that you have to hide from. Now on the level design, there are some new areas. Largely the environments are kind of bland, uninspired, really linear and feel it, and kind of copy pasted, just nowhere near as memorable as the main ones. And that is kind of too bad because the yeah the, the level design is pretty good in in Outlast itself but again discount Outlast the there there are some areas that you revisit such as the prison and you know new areas there's you you see different parts of the the recreational areas in, in Outlast, you go to the 
this theater that they have and in this you'll go to the exercise yard and some of in in the prison you see one area that's it's it's the same area but it's a di at a different point in time and basically when when you're there in Outlast there's something there's there's a certain something there and when you get there in this you see as it's being placed there as it's being completed which is is a cool enough little detail and there's there are a few areas where you have to go through these really narrow and tight spaces and there is at least one tower that you have to climb to the top of and even compared to Outlast this is extremely brutal, grisly, violent and gory and yeah the the note I made a while back which I now can't find the source to anymore suggested that apparently DLC are not don't don't have to go through a rating process so they they did things in this that they knew they wouldn't be able to get away with if it were rated you know since it would either get a prohibitively high rating or I forget I I'm not certain if they can like force them to to remove certain things or they'll like ban it or something but yeah, and yeah, they, there are definitely some things in this that even for Outlast are really out there. Honestly, this contains some of the most disturbing material I've ever seen, regardless of medium, time period, rating anything yeah there's one point where you see someone playing basketball by themselves and you know for a second you're like, oh okay this you know it seems to end then you see that you know of course they're using the decapitated head of Robert Rodriguez to do it someone said it tries too hard to be like really shocking and gory and I can definitely see that And some have said that it does make it less boring than Outlast, which got repetitive in the long run, and where this is more driven by its gore, which I would definitely say the throughout the game there's there's something you know I've I already mentioned the the two you know the the circular saw the, the castration. There's never really any time in this game where the the threat of something extremely gory isn't either you know very close or it it feels ever present even when you can't see it and you know it it hits harder and more frequently and there aren't too many jump scares either it does overuse tension especially early on especially with Frank with the saw with not enough calm areas between and yeah in in Outlast you know you get some fingers cut off and in this there is this very real threat of actual castration I'm not going to give away whether or not it you know actually goes through with that but yeah and really it has about the same amount of really big standout moments that yeah you know the 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 whole Traeger portion dropping and then retrieving the camera which is now you know clearly it's seen better days you know it, it you can still record with it but like part of the lens is broken and it'll every so often get this like staticky you know kind of thing 
and yeah, the this has some things that that go off the same themes as that. And yeah, I I don't I wouldn't say that all of them top the Outlast ones or even match them, but they clearly did try to do something that wasn't the exact same. Sometimes it is also a little, still a little too similar. Some have said there's too much of enemies just popping out and then you have to run and then, you know, yeah. I don't, I didn't really experience that personally. I, did, I would say one thing that this, I would say, tries to match this, but doesn't quite, is the, when you're knee-deep in sewer water, and Chris Walker is right, because you can't run that fast in that, and even if you do, you'll just make a lot of noise, and he'll hear you, and you can always hear him, and he doesn't necessarily have the same problems moving as fast as you do in the water, so, yeah. There are times in this where it tells you, not not many, but it tells you how many hours have passed. You know, instead of just, I I, I get why they did it, but I do feel like it would have it would have been more compelling if you if you didn't know and if if they felt the need to communicate that a lot of time had passed that's the kind of thing you do with like a, a setting or rising sun or you know maybe like there's there's a, a clock on the wall and you know you you catch a quick glimpse of it and then you know you you see it again when I'm, I'm not gonna give away what what happens in the in the time between but you know the yeah, then then when that time has passed, you look at the clock again and you realize that a lot of hours have passed. But but it literally just plants the text right in front of you twelve hours later. And that just takes way too much of like the the mystery away. And yeah, and and you know, they could literally make it part of the cinematic that you look at the the clock. This adds several sexual elements to the horror. I've already mentioned the castration. I'm not, I'm not going to give away any others, but again, that's maybe something where they felt that that couldn't. I, I read that there was at least one sexual element they considered putting in Outlast itself that they didn't. You know, it's it's on Outlast's wiki. I believe it's under Chris Walker. And some suggests there's maybe too much rove in the setting in this one, maybe. This really adds scope to the ending of Outlast, and yeah, I, I that that was a real that that really helped. Again, this this very kind of sudden ending of Outlast. This does not retell the story of Outlast, so you know. I'm, I'm not, obviously, you can't get this and not get Outlast because it's DLC. But for those considering, you know, oh, it's a it's a prequel. Maybe I can play it before playing the main game. Don't do it. You're gonna be super confused about several things. So yeah, make make sure you play it after playing the main game. the the characters are pretty the the non-variant characters are pretty repetitive and and boring it's just they're they're really just these muhaha villains you know the the Murkoff people in outlast you don't really encounter them the the basically they're they're almost all dead when you you know whenever you come upon any 
so when you when you read you know when when you find out just how ugly the things they do are it's because you're reading these notes that they've taken and in in that there is this kind of they they maybe you know when the moment i want to say Todd Salons has a major character state, which I think suggests that he does basically mean it. In storytelling, the fiction portion, I'm, I'm pretty sure, you know, there's a fiction and a non-fiction portion to those, to that film, which as others have mentioned doesn't necessarily gel that well. It, it works better in his other films, but anyway. Once you start writing, writing things, it all becomes fiction, and basically, yeah, it the when when you're reading these awful things that they've done, it's kind of like you, you know, they 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 had a professional distance from their work, so they they didn't empathize with, which is very much. You know, Wayland really empathizes with the the inmates that have these horrible experiments performed on them that they never agree to. So when you're just reading it, you know, okay, it's it's still it's still over the top in Outlast, but here it's partially worsened because there's a recurring character who is who's working for Murkoff, and yeah, it's just like. Okay, we get it. Murkoff is super evil. They're just about profits. They'll do awful things to to people who've done who've done nothing to them just for for profit and such. But yeah, it's just it's really repetitive and boring. And part of it is this, you know, recurring character, but it's also which which is considering the length and you know, how many times you encounter him and how short the encounters sometimes are, that's basically fine. You know, he he essentially takes the role of a, a major antagonist character. But the thing is that he he's not the only one. There at the very start, you know, the the security aren't kind of just the the muscle for the, the doctors. So it's really the doctors who are especially horrible, and you pass like half a dozen or or more, and all of them are just talking about. Well, I mean, we did this thing to him, and then that. And it's just you know, it clearly caused a lot of pain, but I don't think we really we should push it further. And it's just like you know, I said that it it has this kind of you know. It's like it's it's smothering you, but it didn't need to be so one note. It could have been you you know basically it appears that Wayland is the only person who's worked the you know he's one of the only that seemed to at all have a problem with what was going on, and I just feel like you could have had. Yeah, there there are others, but you could have made that part of it. You could have had at least one of these doctors say, "I don't, I think we're, you know, going too far with this or something." Just yeah, it it becomes too much. And and again, like Outlast, they do tend to think that if they just shock you enough, if they gross you out, that's the same as them scaring you. Now, I'm not sure I saw anyone else suggest this, but I do think an argument could be made that the very ending betrays the the protagonist's characterization up to that point. I ultimately, I think, you know, it's maybe like. 60-40 or 70-30, but ultimately I don't quite think it betrays his characterization. I think there's been enough setup for 
it being like that, but I do think that it maybe goes a little too far in, yeah. And while I'm not going to give away how, I would say that the ending of this fits really well with the opening of Outlast. I've reviewed other parts of this franchise, the links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.